Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto awakens ancient power and had Grand Empire the Titan. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. The Trinity Empire. A vast country with many religions and people living within. For the past 2000 years it has withstood wars, corruption, famine and death. And for all of it, the people love living here. And not just humans, yokai, devils, angels and other races live within the empire in peace. However, that doesn't mean that everything is always at peace. Five years ago, an ancient enemy emerged from the darkness. An enemy known as the Nullifiers. These monsters had been trying to enter this world for thousands of years to control and devour the world and its inhabitants. Thankful due to the efforts of Lord Casterwill and Navi the Queen of the Dragons, they were able to stop the Nullifiers. Thanks to Lord Casterwill, he summoned the mighty titans from a world called Huntic to help fight off the Nullifiers. While Navi and her children fought with Lord Casterwill and his followers to destroy and banish the Nullifiers as well. During the war other races also helped fight off the Nullifiers. The devils and angels with their magic made them powerful allies on the battlefield. The Yaokai with their understanding of nature and skills in deceit made them excellent spies. It was thanks to this united force that gave birth to the Trinity Empire. However, even after they were defeated, the Nullifiers came time and again. Never stopping in their attempt to devour the world. But thanks to the Casterwill family and the Trinity Empire, the Nullifiers have failed each time. In the last war the Trinity Empire gained new help in the war. That new help came from a banished ninja and his friends. Thanks to him and his friends the Empire not only found the lost legendary titans, they were able to save hundreds of lives of all races. As thanks for their efforts the Empire gave the seven of them citizenship and places with the government. For the past year of peace, the young ninja and his friends gained not only a place to call home, but love and respect from all. Now we look at the young man as a new day awakens, along with new problems on the horizon. Northwestern part of the Empire early morning. In the city of Grand Light, we find a young man around the age of 19 in his bed. The young man has spiky blonde hair with red tips, clear blue eyes, and three fox-like whisker marks on each cheek. This man is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, a powerful ninja, the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Kitsune, the champion of the Casterwill family, a powerful seeker, and the arch dragoner of his dragon Bahamut. He is also the youngest governor general and leader of the northwestern region of the empire. The empire is broken down into five pieces. The northwest, northeast, southeast, southwest and the central region. The northeast is home to the dragons and their dragoners. The southeast is home to the devils and yaokai. The southwest is home to the angels and the other races like elves, vampires and dwarves. The central region is home to the royal family and is a melting pot of all cultures and races. Other races do live in all regions, it's just you would find more of each race within a specific region. Each region is about the size of the elemental nations. The northwestern region is based off of central as a means to allow all races to live in harmony. Naruto's sleep was interrupted by a knock on his door. As he begins to stir, he feels someone on him. He looks down and sees his wives. Yes, I said wives. Naruto got married after the war had concluded. As he looks at his wives, he smiles at their sleeping forms. He looks to his right and sees Hinata Uzumaki Namaka's formerly Hayuga, Satsuki Uzumaki Namaka's formerly Achiha, and Ino Uzumaki Namaka's formerly Yamanaka. On his left he sees Sakura Uzumaki Namaka's formerly Haruno, Tamamo no Mei Uzumaki Namaka's a young fox woman, Ria's Uzumaki Namaka's formerly Gremory a beautiful devil of great power and of class, and Akeno Uzumaki Namaka's formerly Himajima, Ria's best friend and a fallen angel and human half-breed. On his stomach he sees Gabriel Uzumaki Namaka's a beautiful angel woman, and Rebecca Uzumaki Namaka's formerly Randall a young woman from a powerful dragoner family. Down around his legs he sees Ikaruga Uzumaki Namakas, Yumi Uzumaki Namakas and Miyabi Uzumaki Namakas, three young women Naruto personally trained to be ninjas, after he found them and others during the war. And at the foot of the bed he sees the last of his wives, Mio Uzumaki Namakas formerly Amasaki, Kagaya Uzumaki Namakas formerly Otanashi and Hikari Uzumaki Namakas formerly Hashikas, all three come from powerful mage families that use what is called stigmas for power. Each of the women has a beautiful body with G-cup breasts. Naruto then hears the knock on the door again. He untangles himself from the fleshly pile of breasts and goes to the door after putting on some pants. He opens the door to see one of, if not his best, butler Sebastian. Sebastian is a powerful devil, but Naruto has no reason to fear him. During the war with the nullifiers Naruto had saved an entire village of devils that others had written off as lost. 
As a token of thanks for not only saving his life, but also the lives of his family, Sebastian swore an oath to serve and protect Naruto and his family for the rest of his life. Good morning Master Naruto. Said Sebastian. Good morning Sebastian. So, what is it? You don't usually wake me up for another hour or so. Said Naruto. Yes, I apologize for that but Asura, Indra, Yamato and Lisbeth are cranky, and nothing I can do will calm them down sir. Answered Sebastian. Naruto smiles at that. I understand. I will go and calm them down. Naruto then puts on a shirt and goes to his children's shared bedroom. As he walks down the halls, he sees the other servants going about their routine. He sees humans, elves and devils going about their jobs. Heck, there is even a Lamia working in his home. But the best part. They are all happy. Everyone does their jobs with a smile on their faces. Naruto can't help but smile along with everyone. After four years of combat and five years after his banishment he is finally home. Naruto then enters a room with four cribs in it. As he nears them, he hears infants making some noises. When reaches them he gets a good look at his first children. Ashura has Hinata's eyes and hair, but his hair is starting to look a little spiky like his father's own. Indra has the typical Ichiha hair color and eyes for their clan. Yamato has his father's eyes while he inherited Ino's straight blonde hair. Finally, Lisbeth has her mother's pink hair and green eyes. The only thing all four babies share with each other is three whisker marks on each cheek. Naruto then makes a shadow clone for each baby and starts to gently rock them in his arms. He sings them a lullaby to help them go back to sleep. He then hears the door open. Naruto looks up and sees his wives standing there in the doorway. He smiles at them while silently telling them to not make a sound. After he gives each baby to their respective mother, he kisses each one of his wives. Morning everyone. I am sorry if I woke you. Said Naruto. It's okay Naruto. We were already waking up. Said Gabriel. Yeah. It is okay Naruto. Said Kagaya. Okay, I think it's time for breakfast. Said Rias. I agree. Said Rebecca. After that Naruto, his wives and his children head to the dining hall for breakfast. As they eat, they talked about what plans they had for the day. Hinata, Gabriel and Sakura had plans to help out at the hospital. Satsuki, Ikaruga, Yumi, Miyabi and Rebecca were going to the arena to show off their skills to other ninja and dragoner hopefuls. Mio, Kagaya, Hikaru, Riaz and Akeno are going to teach some young magic users and devils new ways to control their powers. Tamamo was going to just lay about for the day. Just as Naruto was going to decide on what to do, a maid came over to him with a message. Um, Master Naruto. Said a Lamia maid named Mia. Yes. What is it Mia? Asked Naruto. Um, the Empress has called for your presence in the capital. Said Mia. Everyone was surprised by that. The Empress rarely if ever requests anyone to appear in the capital. The only time governor generals are summoned is during important times of the year. Like during the yearly grand tournament or the quarterly reports. Very well. Thank you Mia. The Lamia then slithered out of the room. Well, I guess I know what I am going to be doing today. Said Naruto. What do you think the Empress wants? Asked Mio. I do not know. I better get ready and go see her. Said Naruto. I am going with you Naruto. Said Rebecca. So am I said Ikaruga. Okay. Go get ready. We need to leave quickly. Said Naruto. After that the three finished their breakfast and got ready to go to the capital. Before Naruto left, he hugged and kissed his wives and children. Naruto and Ikaruga got atop Bahamut, while Rebecca rode on her dragon partner, Kuchulin. Bahamut is a massive western-like dragon that has mostly black scales with white scales around the belly and along the spine of his back. Kuchulin, like Bahamut, looks like a western dragon that has mostly light red and dark red scales on its body. The two dragons and their passengers flew through the air straight to the capital. Tentonic City the capital of the Trinity Empire. Tentonic City. A beautiful place with thousands of lives and races living in harmony. It is here we find the royal family of the Trinity Empire, the Casterwills. For 2000 years since Lord Casterwill, the Casterwill family has led this empire through its brightest and its darkest moments. And it is here we find the current leader of the empire and her family. In the palace we find many people running around doing their jobs. Some work the gardens while others keep the place nice and clean. But on this day, we find three of the governor generals here as requested by the empress. The first is Serzich's Lucifer, governor general and leader of the Satan Four of the Southeast. A powerful devil and a slacker, he tends to need his wives to make him do his job. With Serzich's are two over his wives Grafia Lucifuge and Seraphal Leviathan. His third wife, Yasaka a beautiful fox woman, is back at their home looking after their children. The second is Veronica Lotriamont, governor general of the Northeast. A beautiful woman with long blonde hair and a voluptuous figure, she unfortunately lost her husband during the war with nullifiers. She now raises her twin children on her own with her family as support. 
The last person is Michael Jehovah. A powerful angel and older brother to Gabriel. Takes his job as governor general seriously, but is still easygoing. With Michael is his wife Uriel. They are waiting for the final governor general Naruto Uzumaki Namikas to arrive. At that moment a massive roar shook the building. Tuckle, well Naruto is here. Said Surzichas. Yep only one dragon can make the palace shake like that. Smiled Michael. Yes. He really needs to teach the dragon an inside voice. Said a stoic Uriel. Lady Uriel please. No amount of training can have a dragon of that size to have an inside voice as you say. Answered Grafia. Yeah. Bahatan is massive. If anything, that is his inside voice. Said a happy Seraphal. True enough. Besides, that roar shows that Bahamut is healthy for his age. Said Veronica. The doors to the dragon landing pad opens up to reveal Naruto, Ikaruga and Rebecca. Naruto is wearing a custom uniform of a mostly black dress shirt and pants with white highlights. Ikaruga wears her standard white battle dress and shirt that holds her figure well. While Rebecca wore a red and black skin-tight combat uniform that did little to hide her voluptuous figure. Good morning everyone. Said Naruto. Good morning. Said everyone else. So, does anyone know why all four generals were summoned to the capital? The grand tournament isn't for another five months. Asked Ikaruga. Unfortunately, we don't know why we were called to the capital, but the Empress will call us in soon to find out. Said Veronica. At that moment the doors to the throne room opened up. The large group entered the room. There on the throne is the Empress, Jasmine Casterwill. She has long emerald hair and emerald eyes and a large bust. She has milky smooth skin and wears a beautiful gold and emerald dress that holds her impressive figure. Around her neck lies the Amulet of Will, the holder of the legendary Titan of Immortality, Overloss. Alongside her is a handsome man with short blonde hair and crimson eyes. This man is Jonathan Casterwill, Jasmine Casterwill's longtime friend, head advisor and her husband. On his right ring finger is the Ring of Might, the holder of the legendary Titan of Might, Mithras. Thank you for coming on short notice. Said Jasmine. Of course, my lady. Said everyone as they got down on one knee. Everyone please, rise. You know I don't like it when my friends kneel to me. Said Jasmine with a smile on her face. I apologize my lady. But you know how old habits are. Said Michael with a smile. Yes. Said Jasmine. She turned serious next. The others see this and become serious as well. Now, the reason you all are here is because the empire is in danger. How my lady? Asked Serzichas. Jasmine takes in a deep breath and then answers. The nullifiers. Everyone's eyes widen at that. The nullifiers. But how? The nullifiers won't return for another 49 years. Said Veronica. Unfortunately, the nullifiers have found another way into our world. Answered Jonathan. What way my lord? Asked Ikaruga. Sai, 2000 years ago when the nullifiers entered our world, they made a breach. That breach is the spiral mark. Said Jonathan. Yes, we know that. This is common knowledge. Said Uriel. Michael then quieted his wife to allow Jonathan to continue. Yes, that is true. However, what is not common knowledge is that the nullifiers made a second breach. This breach is three times larger than the spiral mark and would allow more nullifiers into our world at a time than the spiral mark. Said Jonathan. Then how come the nullifiers never opened this bigger breach during the wars? If it is bigger than the spiral mark, then they could have used it to make the wars much easier for them and much harder for us. Said Naruto. You're right Naruto. My ancestor knew that future wars would be difficult if the second breach was opened each time. That is why Lord Casterwill sealed the breach long ago. Said Jasmine. Serzichas gains a thoughtful look in his eyes. The second breach. The seal is failing isn't it? Yes. It is. In a maximum of three years to minimum of two years the seals around the breach will fall. And the nullifiers will come sooner than the normal 50 year gap. Said Jasmine. Everyone in the room goes silent. They couldn't believe this. They are still repairing the damages from the war. And if the nullifiers come so soon. Then the world will finally fall to them. What can we do? How can we fix the seals on the second breach? Asked Michael. Fortunately, Lord Casterwill left instructions on how to fix the seals. Said Jasmine. How my lady? Asked Seraphal in a rare form of seriousness. Lord Casterwill said that the only way to seal the breach is with the primordial titans. Ancient titans that predate all other titans. The only problem is that we don't know where they are. Said Jasmine. It was at this moment that Karama the Kyubi no Kitsune spoke up. Naruto. Let me out. I need to speak to them about this. Ugh. Shouted Naruto. Everyone looked at Naruto with surprised looks and worry on their faces especially his wives. Naruto. Are you alright? Asked Ikaruga and Rebecca. Huff puff, I am okay. It's just Karama, he wants to speak to everyone. Says he knows what is going on. 
Kayubi summoned Jutsu. Said Naruto. He then slams the palm of his hand on the floor, and a large puff of smoke appears. From the smoke came a nine-tailed fox the size of a house cat. At that moment Kurama is grabbed by Sir Afal who hugged and squeezed him. Oh Kuratan it is so good to see you again. Said a very happy Sir Afal. Ugh. Lady Sir Afal, must you do this every time? Asked an annoyed Kurama. Yep. Rolling his eyes, he says. Should have known. Kurama then jumps out of Sir Afal's arms and walks over to the Empress. He then bows to her before speaking. Lady Casterwill, it is good to see you again. Dasmin smiles at Kurama. It is good to see you as well Kurama. Now, you said you know about the Primordial Titans. Yes, I do. Two thousand years ago, my father the Sage of Six Paths, met a man just four days before his death. That man was Lord Casterwill. This gets everyone's attention. Lord Casterwill went to the Elemental Nations before he passed. Lord Casterwill asked my father to guard nine amulets of great power. Those amulets hold the titans you seek. Before our father passed, he gave me and my siblings each an amulet to guard and hide in the nations. And he made us swear on all of our tales to never reveal their locations, unless a member of the Casterwill family or a champion of the Casterwill family came for them. We bid you were meant to guard and protect the nations from the nullifiers. It is also why my father placed a barrier around the elemental nations to protect them from the nullifiers. The barrier can't keep them out forever, but it will delay them for a time. I see. So, they are in the elemental nations. This makes this much harder. Said Jonathan. Naruto goes over to Kurama. Kurama, why didn't you tell me this? Aren't we partners? I am sorry Naruto. But my father brought me and my siblings into this world. Even after his death I couldn't break my promise to him. I am sorry I didn't tell you. Naruto then goes down to his level and hugs him. It okay. I get it. You owe him everything including your life. Kurama then wraps his tails around Naruto. He then gets on Naruto's shoulder. Okay then. Where are the titans? Sign, unfortunately, me and my siblings decided we would not tell each other where we hid the titans as a just in case. Also, we have to get each titans in a specific order. And what is this order? Asked Grafia. Our tails are the order. One through nine is the order we must go to get them. And I can't even tell you Naruto where the titan I guard is until you find the others. I understand. Thank you Kurama. Kurama nods and then returns to the seal within Naruto. Naruto then looks at the Empress and speaks. My lady, I believe I should head out immediately to find these titans. I agree. We will also send out the 5th, 6th and 9th battalions to help you. Said Jasmine. Naruto shakes his head no at that. I am sorry my lady, but that is a bad idea. What do you mean Naruto? Asked Jonathan. We can't send a large group of soldiers and fighters into the elemental nations. This could start a war and we don't need that right now. Plus, the people of the nations don't even know about the titans, and in the off chance that I fail, we will need every able body to fight the nullifiers, should they breach into our world. Said Naruto. Dasmin frowns at what Naruto says. She doesn't like the idea of sending Naruto back to the nations. She knows about what happened to him years ago. The pain, the suffering and the absolute loneliness he endured at the hands of his village over something that was out of his hands. But before she could protest the idea of sending him back, Jonathan speaks up. I agree with Naruto. We must have all options available open. I know you don't want Naruto to go back my love, but he is one of only seven people within the empire who knows the nations. Said Jonathan. And I am not about to have the mothers of my children to go back, no matter what. I grew up without any parents in my life, I am not going to deprive my children of both of theirs. Said Naruto. Everyone looks at Naruto when he says that. They all know of how he suffered in the nations, and how people are taken from their families because of the bloodlines they have. Barbaric and disgusting. They understand why Naruto would never let the mothers of his children go back, because he fears that if people from Kumo, Iwa or even worse his original home of Kanoha found out, they would stop at nothing to capture them. Dasmin takes a deep breath and says. Alright Naruto. You may go but you must take three people with you. I don't want you to go alone. Yes, my lady. I will return home and get packed and head out immediately. Said Naruto. He then bows to her along with Ikaruga and Rebecca and leave the chamber. Brandlight City. The three return to the dragons and head back home. When Naruto gets home, he tells his wives what is going to happen. Of course, most are upset. No fucking way are you going back without us. Yelled Satsuki. Okay, maybe upset is delight of a word to describe them. Naruto we are going with you, end of discussion. Said Hanada. Yeah we are going with you. Said Ino. That is right. We are not letting you go without us. Said Sakura. The rest of the girls pretty much said the same thing. This went on for about 10 minutes until Naruto ends the yelling. Enough. Yelled Naruto. Getting all of the girls to quiet down. Look I get it. 
I really do, but I have made my decision on who is going with me. So, when are we going? Asks Itsuki. Tsutsuki you are not going. And neither are Hinata, Ino or Sakura. And before you four say anything the reason why none of you are going is right in the next room asleep. Said Naruto. The girls finally understand what Naruto is talking about. Girls listen to me. I lived all my life without any form of parental love or guidance. I won't let that happen to my children. They need their mothers. And I promise, I will come back. And what do I always do? All of the girls smile at that. Hikaru then answers. And you always keep your promises. Because that is your ninja way. That is right. Said Naruto with a smile on his face. So, who is going with you then? Asked Mio. The ones going with me are Rebecca, Riaz and Kagaya. Said Naruto. Why them Naruto? Why not anyone else? Asked Akeno. Two reasons. First is because this less amount of people going will be more mobile and faster to move around. The second reason is they are the only ones not pregnant right now. Said Naruto with a smirk on his face. All of the girls blush at that. Those that are pregnant rub their stomachs where their child is growing. The girls Naruto said that he wanted to go with him went to get their things packed for the long journey. Naruto then goes in the room where his children are asleep. He goes over to each one and kisses each one on the head. He then begins to speak. No matter what, I will come home to the four of you and your mothers. Along with your soon-to-be-born siblings and their mothers. I will never leave you alone, I promise. Don't worry about them master. Everyone in this building, nay, in this city will keep them safe. I swear on my dark soul I will protect them. Said Sebastian. He then hands Naruto some tea. Thank you Sebastian. I know you will. Naruto then drinks the tea. A warm smile comes onto his face. Hmm, delicious. You always make the best tea Sebastian. Of course, master. For I am one hell of a butler. Said Sebastian with a smile. Thank you Sebastian. Naruto then turns serious. Sebastian, listen I don't want my wives to know this, but I have a bad feeling that someone from Kanoha will come for my children. Someone dark and devoid of emotions. Be on the lookout for any who fit that description, please. Sebastian turns serious as well. Of course, master. I will keep a close eye on things here for you. Naruto thanks Sebastian and heads out of the room. Sebastian lingers for just a moment and swears in his head that no one will touch a hair on his master's children's heads, so long as he is alive. After that Sebastian walks out of the room to continue his duties for the day. A few hours later Naruto, Riaz, Kagaya and Rebecca are ready to go. Naruto is now saying goodbye to his wives before he leaves. Naruto believes that they will be gone for about a year. Naruto please just come home in one piece. Said to Mamo no Mei. Please, keep each other safe. Said Akeno. Come back as quick as you can. Said Yumi. Yeah, I want my child to see their father. Said Miyabi. Don't worry girls. We will be fine. Said Naruto. Just stay away from Kanoha Naruto. Said Hanada. Yeah, no doubt Kanoha has gone down the toilet since we left. Said Ino. Down the toilet. Please, that village probable went down the shitter and out the pipes. Said Satsuki. Satsuki please, don't say that. We don't need that in our heads. Groaned Sakura. Yes, a young lady should never say things like that. Said an annoyed Gabriel. Yeah but I doubt Satsuki is going to change anytime soon. Said Mio. Yes, unfortunately you're correct. Said Ikaruga. Naruto begins to chuckle at how his wives are right now. I am going to miss all of you. I promise that we will finish this mission as soon as possible. All of the girls staying behind surround him and hug him with all of their love. They truly hope that he will come home soon. They also hope he doesn't come into contact with Kanoha, but the chances of that is slim. Naruto then turned to the girls that are coming with him. Okay girls listen up. I have a few things to go over with you. Riaz then looks at him as she raises an eyebrow. What do you mean Naruto? All we have to do is fly with dragons to each place, talk with the Biju, and go to where the titans are hidden. It is that easy. Naruto shakes his head at her. No, it won't Riaz. For one the dragons won't be able to fly us everywhere. Rebecca raises her eyebrow at that. Why not Naruto? A few injutsu barrier around the nations. Answered Naruto. The girls are confused by what Naruto means. What do you mean Naruto? Why would the barrier affect the dragons? Asked Kagaya. When the sage of six paths put up the barrier around the nations to protect it from the nullifiers, he made a mistake with it. The barrier stops anything over a certain height from absorbing large amount of magic at any one time. This makes it impossible for most nullifiers from being at their most powerful, but it also means the same for the dragons. Answered Naruto. Okay that explains why the dragons won't be able to fly us everywhere. But can't you use your six path powers and remove or change the barrier? Asked Rebecca. Naruto shakes his head at that. No. For one thing, my six path powers are nowhere at the same level as the sage. 
Plus, I know for a fact Karama will never let me or anyone else remove it. I also don't want to risk the nations being attacked by the nullifiers, should they come sooner than expected. Answered Naruto. He then looks at the back of both of his hands. There he sees the mark of the sun on his right and the mark of the moon on his left. Turns out when Naruto and Sasu clashed at the Valley of the End years ago, the two of them were taken over by their ancestors Ashura and Indra respectively. When the fight was over Ashura had won and took the mark of the moon from Indra. When that happened the darkness in Indra faded and his mind became clear. Indra then apologized to Ashura for all the wrong he had done. Ashura then forgave his brother. After that the two left Naruto and Sasuke, but not before leave Naruto with the knowledge on how to use the power of both marks. The good thing is that the titans won't be affected by the barrier, since they draw the magic and energy out of the caster, meaning us. Said Naruto. The girls nod at that with Kurama and Naruto's head agreeing with him. Okay. So, both flying the dragons everywhere is out, and removing or modifying the barrier is also out. So, what is the plan? Asked Rias. We will need a base of operations to work in while in the nations. And the best place for us is the land of spring. Answered Naruto. Why the land of spring? Asked Kagaya. Naruto smirks at her. The reason is because before I was banished Sakura, Satsuki and myself, along with Satsuki's brother Sasuke and my pervert of a teacher, saved the now daimyo of spring. The spring daimyo became a good friend to me and those that left with me. Koyuki Kazuhana told me before I left that the land of spring would always be open to me no matter what. But this also gives me the opportunity to open a trade agreement with her. Said Naruto. The girls agree with that idea. Naruto had been talking about reaching out to some people within the nations for trade with Spring and Suna being on top of his list. Okay, it is time to go. Said Naruto. He then climbs onto Bahamut with Kagaya joining him. Rebecca and Rias then jump onto Kuchulan. The four girls and two dragons then fly high into the sky. As they flew, they look down at the city. There they see the citizens of the city waving at them and wishing them luck. For they would need it. Unknown place in the empire. The place was cold and devoid of light and warmth. It felt as if your very soul was being removed if you came to this place. The reason is that this is one of the bases to the organization. The organization is a group made up of humans that believe that they should not have to share the world with those they believe as lesser beings like the devils or angels. The organization has been around for hundreds of years trying and failing to use titans and magic to take over the empire from both within and outside, to destroy it and make way for their rule. They want to enslave any and all who oppose them. So, the champion is going the nations to find the primordial titans. Said a woman. Yes, my lady. They hope to find them and use them to stop the nullifiers from returning before the 50-year gap. Answered a young man. Interesting. Do we know where these titans are? Asked the woman. No, my lady. But our spies within the empire have told us that only the Biju know where they are. But the Biju and the champion would not tell him until they found the others. Answered a young woman. Disappointing. No matter. Send out three groups of our forces to find those that have the Biju sealed within them, and force the Biju to tell us where the Titans are. Then bring the Jinchurikis here. We will use both the Jinchurikis and the Titans to crush the Empire and those lesser fools into the ground. The woman gains an evil smirk on her face. Soon the Empire will fall, and we will rise. Our time is upon us. And this time we will not fail. The room began to shake with all of her followers cheering and shouting with her. Many members began to prepare for the mission ahead. Akatsuki base, aim. Many figures began to shine in a dark room. Most of the figures are not even in the room, but are just projections for the meeting about to take place. It is time. The time for peace is close at hand. Is everyone ready? Asked a red-haired man with a blue-haired woman standing next to him. Yes, Lord Payne. Answered the others. Good. Didara, so sorry that both of you will go after the Achibi Jinchiriki. Said Payne. Yes, Lord Payne. It will be done. Said Sasori. Yeah. I will show the hidden sand my art. Answered Dadara. Ignoring Dadara's rant about his art, Pain spoke again. Good. Haydn, Kakuzu the two of you will go after the Nibi Jinchiriki, after we collect the Achibi. So long as I get some money out of this then I don't care. Said Kakuzu. Of course, Lord Pain. I will do that and sacrifice many to Jashin Sama. Raved Haydn. Many in the room just sweat dropped at that and wished Haydn came with a mute button sometimes. Excellent, then we will go after the Sanbi once it reforms in two months' time. Then we will go after the rest of the Biju. Said Payne. Lord Payne, what about the Kayubi Jinchiriki? He has not been seen or heard of since his banishment. Don't we need the soul of the Kayubi for world peace? Asked Itachi. Payne nods his head at that. That won't be a problem. Once we have collected all of the other Bijus the hidden villages will tear the nations apart to find him. We will let them do the work for us. 
Then when he is found we will swoop in and take the Kayubi out of the Jinchuriki. The group nods their heads and begins to disappear. They all left to do their jobs until only three remained. Our time is almost here. We need to find the Kayubi Brad and fast. Do not disappoint, Payne said the man with a spiral mask. Of course, Madara. Once we have the first eight bijus the hidden villages will look everywhere to find the only one who will save them. The Kayubi and his friends are great at hiding themselves. But if every nation and shinobi look for them then there is nowhere they can hide. Said Payne. Madara nods his head at that. Just remember, we cannot obtain peace without all of the biju. With that Madara left the room. Now only two remain. Payne then sighs. The woman, Conan, goes over to him and places a hand on his shoulder. I am fine Conan. Just tired is all. I am worried Nagato. Something is going to happen soon. Something that will change everything. Also, I don't trust Madara, he hides too much from us. Nagato nods his head at her. I agree. Something is coming, but I don't know what. But it doesn't matter right now. As much as we both don't like it, we need Madara's help. In time he will be dealt with and whatever plans he has will fail. Conan nods her head at that. The two of them are the only original members of Akatsuki left, and with them their original goal is still within their grasp. Hanoha. The once proud and powerful village is now the third strongest of the five hidden villages. And the only reason is because Kiri had just come out of a civil war and is still rebuilding, and Iwa is in the middle of a famine, weakening the village and the land of Earth greatly. The reason for Kanoha's downfall. Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. After his banishment all the places Naruto went to and helped in broke off all treaties with the village. First was Spring then Wave, and then the rest followed with them. The new daimyo was furious at the lost revenues. He sent out letters demanding why they cut off trade with his country. The response he gained infuriated him to no end. They all cut off trade with him because he and the Council of Konoha banished their hero Naruto. The new daimyo was not like his father in regards of Jinchurikis. His father saw them as humans, but the new daimyo saw them as nothing more than weapons and tools to be used and thrown away when no longer needed. He tried many times to get the treaties back, but had to back off when they all threatened his country with war if he did not stop. No matter how powerful his armies and Konoha was, they are no match against multiple nations attacking them with no allies to call for help. In the Hokage's office we find a man sitting behind the Hokage's desk dealing with paperwork. He looked like an older Naruto without the whisker marks on his face. This man is Minato Namikas, the Yandame Hokage, the Yellow Flash and Naruto's father. Turns out he and his wife did not die years ago when the Kayubi was freed from Kashina. When Minato sealed the Kayubi he sealed the soul into Naruto and three tails worth of power into his other children, Naruko, Natsumi and Menma. However, there was a problem that no one foresaw. When the sealing was done the power in Naruko, Natsumi and Menma tried to return to the Kayubi in Naruto. The problem was that it was killing all four children in the process. So, Jiraiya offered a way to stop this. He said that the children needed to be separated for at least 14 years, in order for the soul of the Kayubi to grow back, its lost power. With a very heavy heart both Minato and Kishina left Konoha with Naruko, Natsumi and Menma. Before they left, they ordered Jiraiya to take care of Naruto. Jiraiya swore that he would, he lied. Years later when they returned, they hoped for a happy family reunion. What they got was a nightmare that continues to this day. They came back three months too late. Naruto and his friends were already long gone and without a trace. When Minato and Kishina found out what happened to their son well, let's just say that about 50% of the village had broken bones and lacerations on their bodies within 30 minutes of the parents finding out. Minato continues to work on the paperwork. He then sighs and stops. He opens a drawer in his desk and takes out a photo. The photo is of the day when his first four children were born and the only photo he and his wife have of Naruto. In the photo Kishina holds Naruko and Natsumi, while Minato holds Naruto and Menma. Minato begins to let out tears as he reminds himself of his failure. He might have raised five great children, but his oldest was forced to live a life no one should have, especially alone. While the family was in hiding Minato and Kishina had two more children, two more daughters named Akane and Akemi now ten years old. For years now Minato had been trying to find his lost son and bring him home, but to no avail. Minato then put the photo back into the drawer and closed it. At this point someone he truly hated with all his being came through the door. From the door came Jiraiya the former Toad Sage. Yes, that is not a typo, Jiraiya lost access to the Toads after they found out that it was because of Jiraiya, the civilians along with the elders and the new daimyo, that Naruto was banished behind Tsunade's back. When Kashina found out that, she beat and tortured him for hours on end with her sword and her chains. She would have killed him if not for Minato telling her that they needed Jiraiya to find Naruto. Kishina relented at that but told the former sage that the moment Naruto comes home, Jiraiya was a dead man. Well? Any news on Naruto or his friends? Asked Minato with an angry look on his face. 
Gureya shakes his head. No. At least not on Naruto. What is it then? Asked Minato. The Akatsuki. Answered Jiraiya. Minato narrows his eyes at that. So, they are starting to move again. Jiraiya nods his head. What are they doing now? They are after the Ichibi Jinchiriki. Said Jiraiya. Gara. They are after Gara. Corrected Minato. He then thinks about this. He then looks at Jiraiya. When are they going after him? In four days. The info I got is that Dadara and Sasori are going to Suna to attack and capture Gara. Answered Jiraiya. Then we will send some shinobi to help defend Suna and Gara. Also send a messenger bird to warn them. Said Minato. Jiraiya looked like he was going to speak against this, but a dark glare from Minato stopped him cold. And if you say we should let the Akatsuki take Gara just so we could save him and get our alliance with Suna back, I will shove a Rasengan down your throat. That argument died in Jiraiya's throat. Ever since Minato came back, he has treated Jiraiya with nothing but hatred and distance. Minato even placed seals on Jiraiya to make him suffer in many ways. A few examples is that Jiraiya can no longer jump through the Hokage office window without slamming into an invisible barrier like in a cartoon. Another is that Jiraiya can no longer peep on any women, since there is a seal on him that gives him a very strong shock to his privates, should he try. And the best part is that Jiraiya can't remove them himself, since the seals need both Minato's and Kashina's blood to get them off. Very well. I will head back out and try and find something on Naruto. Said Jiraiya as he left the room. Minato glares at his former sensei as he leaves. Once Jiraiya left Minato get started on organizing the mission for Suna. Naruto, I know that I have failed you my son. But I will help your friends even if they don't want me to. I hope you're alright wherever you are. Said Minato. Land of Spring 4 hours later. The Land of Spring is a beautiful place. It is home to the best technology in the nations. Trains, airships and even chakra empowered armor is commonplace here. It is also the home of Koyuki Kazuhana, also known as Yuki Fujikas, the famous movie actress who played Princess Gale in the as named movies. In the daimyo place Koyuki was taking a much needed rest. For the past few weeks, she has been very busy. Paperwork, meetings and acting out a role for a new movie. She ordered her guards to not disturb her for any reason, unless the fate of the nation is at stake. She had just gotten out of her bath and into her clothes when four guards and Sandeo Osama, her most trusted assistant, came running into her room. Didn't I say to not disturb me? Unless the nation is being attacked right now please leave. Said a very annoyed Koyuki. I know my lady, but we need to get you to safety. Said Sandeo. Raising an eyebrow, Koyuki asks. And why is that? It was at that moment that a massive roar was heard. The entire palace shook with a roar. Koyuki grabbed onto a bedpost to keep herself upright. Once the shaking stopped, she then ran out onto the balcony. Sandeo and the guards ran after her to keep her safe. When the six got outside they froze at what they saw. Two beasts thought to be nothing but legends, dragons. One had light and dark shaded red scales on its body. The other dragon had black scales on most of its body with white scales going down its back and on its belly. They saw that the dragons were coming down towards them. Just before they could leave however, a voice that they all knew rang out from atop the black and white dragon. Hello, Koyuki Haim. It has been a long time. Said the voice that clearly had a smile in it. The group then looks up and then smiles. As the dragons landed the ground shook at the impact. The group then runs down to the courtyard to meet the person that they know and respect. When Koyuki finally makes it out to the courtyard she smiles a big smile at the man in front of her. Naruto. Shouted a happy Koyuki. She then runs over to him and pulls him into a strong hug who then returns it. After the hug was over, she then looks him in the eyes and then she slaps him. That was for scaring everyone in my country. Naruto scratches the back of his head at that. He, sorry Koyuki Haim. But we needed to get here quickly, and the dragons are the faster way possible. Koyuki raises an eyebrow. We. She then looks behind Naruto to see three beautiful women. Oh, hello there. Welcome to my country. Said Koyuki with a smile on her face. The woman with reddish-orange hair smiled at Koyuki and said. It is a pleasure to meet you Daimyo-sama. My name is Rebecca. The crimson-haired woman is Rias. And the black-haired woman with the bow in her hair is Kagaya. The two women nod their heads when their names are said. So are the three of you his companions for whatever it is you're doing? Asked Koyuki. The girls start giggling at the question. Koyuki and her group now have confused looks on their faces when Naruto answers her. You are half right. They are my companions for my mission, but they are also my wives. You are married? Asked a stunned Koyuki. Yes, he is. And not just to us. Said Rias with a smirk. The daimyo and her group turn to her as she continues. He is also married to 12 other women back home. Koyuki and her group dropped their jaws when they heard that. 
Sandeyu and the guards mutter lucky bastard under their breaths, while Koyuki just stares at Naruto with a shocked look on her face. Naruto chuckles at the group. He then becomes serious. As much fun as this is. Koyuki-sama, we came here today for a reason. Koyuki snaps out of her shocked daze when Naruto speaks. What is the reason Naruto? We need your help. Said Naruto. Koyuki then nods her head. She then has everyone go into the palace to talk. Naruto has Bahamut and Kuchulin fly into the nearby forest so as to not scare any more people. But not before giving them both some magic meat. Magic meat is a special meat for dragons that need a power boost or if they are in an area with very little magic to absorb. After a very long conversation with Naruto and his wives, Koyuki is not only very impressed with what they all have done in the war but also very scared about the nullifiers coming back. Aikami. Breathed out Koyuki. Spring might be the most technological country in the nations, but even we would still be crushed by the nullifiers if they came back. Koyuki then looks at Naruto with a determined look on her face. Naruto, know that I will help you and the Trinity Empire in any way I can. Naruto then smiles at her. Thank you Koyuki Haim. I would also like to make an alliance with you and the Empire. Great. I would love an alliance with your new home. Smiled Koyuki. Good. Then let us begin the negotiations. Said Naruto. Four days later. The last four days have been very productive for both Naruto and his group and with Koyuki and Spring Country. With the Alliance Spring not only gets new technology and goods, but also the Empire's help should they need it. Well the Empire basically gets a shipping port in the nations and goods not found in the Empire, plus a fallback point for refugees, should anything happen in the Empire. Now Naruto and Rebecca could leave their dragon partners in Spring without worry. I want to thank you again Koyuki Haim for agreeing with the Alliance and for letting us leave our dragons here. Said Naruto. It is no problem Naruto. Plus, with this alliance spring we'll get stronger along with those we have already allied with, like Suna and Wave. Said Koyuki. The two continued to talk in the throne room for a few minutes when one of Koyuki's guards came running in. I'm Yusama. Yelled the guard. What is it? I am in a meeting here with Naruto. Asked an annoyed Koyuki. I apologize my lady. But one of our spies tell us that the Akatsuki is going to attack Suna. Said the guard. Both Koyuki and Naruto's eyes widen at that. Gara. They are going after the Biju in him. If they get to him and try to extract the Biju out of him, then they will kill him in the process. Said Naruto. Naruto then began to run out of the room and to find his wives. Koyuki right behind him. Naruto then finds his wives out in the courtyard having a light spar. Girls. We need to go to Suna right now. Yelled Naruto getting their attention. What do you mean Naruto? Asked Rias. Yeah, what is the rush? Asked Kagaya. My friend Gara is in danger. The group known as the Akatsuki is going to Suna to capture him and the Biju in him. If they get to him, they will kill Gara and take the Biju in him. If that happens, we will never find the Primordial Titans. So, we need to leave right now. Said Naruto. The girls nod their heads at that. They gather their belongings and get ready to head out. But Naruto, Suna is days away. You would never make it in time. Said Koyuki. She wanted to help, but not even her airships would take at least a day or more to get there. Naruto then smirks at her. Not in the way we are traveling. Our dragons might not be as strong or as fast with the barrier up, but that does not stop our titans. Naruto then takes out a ring with a blue stone on it. Awaken. Legendary titan of summons. Quetzal Cody. From the ring came a large blue dragon. Unlike Bahamut, this dragon looks like an eastern dragon with a long body with feathers instead of scales. It had eight wings and armor around its head and on the tip of its tail. This is the powerbended form of Quetzal Cody. If a seeker can bond with their titans on a higher level, then the titans can awaken a stronger form based on how they bond with the seeker in question. Koyuki's eyes widen at the great beast in front of her. She just saw it, but could not believe that such a large beast came out of such a small ring. Oh wow. When you said that the titans live inside of amulets and rings, I really didn't believe you. Sorry for doubting you Naruto. Apologize Koyuki. Tuckle, it's okay Koyuki Haim. If I was in your position, I would probably do the same said Naruto with a smile. He then becomes serious. Okay girls, it's time to go. The girls nod at that. The group of four then climb on top of Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl, take us to Suna. We need to save a friend. The might feathered dragon roared out an agreement. It then took off into the sky at high speed. Two hours later and five miles away from Suna. The group of Kanoha Shinobi are running through the desert as quickly as they could towards Suna. The group was ordered to help protect the Kazakiage, Gara from the Akatsuki. The group is comprised of teams 8, 10 and 11. But before they left Kanoha the elders pushed for team 7 to go as well. Team 8 has Kurana Yuhi, along with her students Shino, Kiba and his Ninkan partner Akimaru, and Hinata's twin sister Hasana. 
Hasan looks just like her sister in appearance, but she wears a combat bra and combat skirt with biker shorts on and black ninja sandals. She also wears a trench coat over herself. Her breasts are smaller than her sister. While Hinata has G-cup breasts, Hasana has D-cup breasts, much to Hasana's ire. Theme 10 is comprised of Asuma Saratobi and his student Shikamaru, Choji and Ino's older twin brother Inazan. Inazan looks like a carbon copy of their father Inoichi, he wears standard Anbu pants, shirt and gloves, along with green ninja sandals. Theme 7 has Kakashi Haddock and his students, at least one of his original students. The two new students of his are Sai, a young pale man and Sakura's twin sister named Sakuri, who is a massive Sasuke fangirl. She is basically a carbon copy of Sakura, but with a flat chest. The only student of his original team is Sasuke Kachiha. After Naruto was banished Sasuke was spoiled even more by the village, much to the chagrin of Makoto and the rest of the Uchiha clan. What not many know about the Uchiha massacre is that Itachi did not kill for power, he killed those involved with trying to take over the village, and only those who supported the coup, Itachi did not kill any women or children in the massacre. But what not even Itachi knew was that Sasuke knew about the coup, but said nothing about it. The reason is because Sasuke idolized his father and his way of thinking. So, when Itachi killed their father, Sasuke saw that as a betrayal of the clan. That is why Sasuke wants to kill Itachi, because Sasuke blames his brother for denying what he believes as the Ichiha's right to control the village and everyone in it. Inazan, Sakuri and Hasana were team 6, but after their siblings left the village and the death of their original sensei, they were placed in other teams to even them out. But before the split Inazan and Hasana started dating each other. Team 11 is comprised of former Anbu agent Tenzo Akiyamato. His students are the Hokage's children. The first is Naruko, she has spiky red hair that reaches to her shoulders, purple eyes and whisker marks on her cheeks. She carries a long sword on her back. She is dating Kiba. The second is Natsumi, she has long blonde hair that reaches her lower back and blue eyes with whisker marks on her cheeks. She carries an ajinata on her back. She is dating Sai. The final person is Menma, he looks just like Naruto, but with red hair with blonde tips on the end. He has purple eyes and whisker marks on his cheeks. He has metal knuckles guards on his gloves for more punching power. They were nearing Suna when Hisana felt something closing in on them. She activated her by Akijin and then gasped at what she saw. Hisana? What is it? Asked a worried Inazan. That damn? Yelled Hisana. At that moment they hit the sand as a massive creature flew over their heads. The creature did not even acknowledge them and just kept on flying by. The group then gets up as Sakuri says what is on all of their minds. What the fuck was that? I do not know. But whatever it is, it's headed to Suna. Said Kakashi. Troublesome, this just got harder if we have to fight that thing. Said Shikamaru. Come on. We need to get over there now. Said Asuma. Hi. Said the group. They then ran even faster to Suna. Unaware of who they will meet when they get there. Suna. The village was under attack. Streets and buildings were damaged or on fire. Citizens are running to shelter to get out of the shinobi's way. To think that all of this destruction was caused by two people. On top of some kind of clay bird is Dadar raining bombs and explosives from on high. While that was happening, Sasori of the Red Sands was using his army of puppets to keep the Suna ninjas busy. Damn it. This is not good. Hey Tamari, where is Gara? Asked Kankuro as his puppets fought off Sasori's. The Mari is in the air fighting both the enemy puppets and trying to stop the bombs from destroying more of her home. He is near the village square right now fighting a large amount of puppets and stopping more bombs. We need to get over there now. At this point the puppets start to fight even harder. You will not stop us. Your brother is coming with us and we will take the biju in him. Said Sasori. The battle was looking bleak. The Akatsuki had chosen well in fighting off Gara's powers. Dadara was about to disable Gara when suddenly. Stand by my side. Albion. Punish them. Gargul. From the sky came a voice that the sand siblings knew, but only one could place it. At that moment a sword slashed right through Dadara's clay bird destroying it sending him to the ground. Then massive amounts of water flooded the streets of Suna, but only washed away the enemy puppets. The sand shinobi looked to see who helped them and saw things they never thought they would ever see. One looked like a man, but he had armor of unknown origins and a golden sword that is attached to his armor. The second looked like a beast of living rock that controlled water. The final beast looked like a massive feathered dragon. Whoa, what is that? Asked Kankuro. I don't know. But it looks like it is on our side. Said Tamari. Our smiles. They are. The siblings look at him. Do you know who sent them brother? Asked Kankuro. Yes. An old friend. Said Gara. An old friend? Who? Asked Tamari. Oh, Tamari-chan that hurts my feelings. I can't believe you forgot about me. Said a voice with some mirth in it. The two look up at the dragon and see three women and one man. 
But it is the man that gets their eyes to widen and smiles to appear on their faces. Naruto. Yelled both Tamari and Kankuro happily. Hey guys. Good to see you are doing okay. Said a smiling Naruto. But the reunion was ruined when they were interrupted. Well, well. The Kyubi Jinchuriki has revealed himself at last. Said Sasori. How dare you ruin my art. I will kill you for that. Yelled Dadara. Naruto and the girls turn to them and glare at them. Akatsuki, I am going to give you this one chance. Leave Suna and Gar right now or you will be destroyed. Said Naruto. Quetzal Cody, Albi and Engar Ghoul ready themselves for battle with their seeker, just as the girls do the same. Gara and his siblings also got ready along with the sand ninjas as well. It seems that we have lost the element of surprise. We will be back. Said Sasori. Before his partner could complain, Sasori used his puppets to create a smokescreen to escape. The groups of ninjas and empire soldiers then stood down. They turned to each other and began to greet each other. It is good to see you again brother. Said Gara. Likewise, brother said Naruto. The two then clasped their hands and they brought each other into a manly hug. When they were done Tamari walks over to Naruto. She looks him in the eyes and then smacks him in the face. After that she hugs him as well with tears of happiness at seeing her crush again. Tuckle, somehow I just know I am going to be smacked a lot on this journey. Joke Naruto as his wives giggle or laugh at him. It was at this point as soon in came over to them. Hazuki Ajsama. Said Akinoichi. What is it Mitsuri? Asked Gara. Hinoha is at the northern gate. Answered the now named Mitsuri. The Suninin start to growl at that. They still did not forget nor forgive what Kanoha did to Naruto years ago. Everyone calm down. I know that no one likes Kanoha right now, but they did send a messenger bird to warn us of the Akatsuki's attack. Said Gara. The group of Suninins calm down after they hear that but are still angry. Now then, let us go and see who Kanoha has sent to help us. Naruto, you and your friends should stay away for now. No Gara. They are going to find out that I am back soon enough. I might as well deal with it now rather than later. Said Naruto. Are you sure Naruto? Asked Rebecca. Yes, I am sure. The girl smile at him. Then we are with you no matter what. Said Kagaya. Naruto smiles at his wives for believing in him. The group goes over to the gate to greet the Kanoha support group that was sent. The group from Kanoha was standing outside of the village waiting for the Kazakiage to let them into the village. But a few were getting annoyed while waiting. Where is the Kazakiage? He should have been here by now. Said an aggravated Sasuke. Yeah. Doesn't he know how precious Sasuke's time is? Screeched Sakuri. Will the two of you shut up? We don't need a war with Suna right now because you two are tired of waiting. Said Menma. What did you say to me you bastard? You don't get to talk to your superior like that. Yelled Sasuke. Superior? Please. Our brother kicked your ass years ago and he didn't even us the Kyubi's chakra to do it. Yelled Naruko. I agree. Naruto Niasen is a lot stronger and a better person than you Sasuke team. Snarled Natsumi. Enough. No more arguing. Yelled Asuma. The five ninjas glared at each other for a few seconds before relenting. Troublesome, not even in the gate yet and we already have problems. Said Shikamaru. Hey Hasana. Do you see the creature that flew here? Asked Choji. Yes, but it is not attacking. It looks like it is watching over the village. Said a confused Asana. But why would it do that? Asked Inazan. Because the creature is a summon. Its summoner is a friend and ally of Suna. Said Gara as he came towards the group. Lord Kazakiage. Said most of the group who then bowed to him. The only ones who did not bow were Sasuke and Sakuri. Sasuke. Sakuri. Bow now. Yelled Kurunai. The rest of the group glared at the two except Kakashi. The two growled but bowed at the Kazakiage. Gara smirks at that. It seems that Kanoha's golden boy still thinks that he is better than everyone else. Well it doesn't matter. What are you doing here Kanoha? If this is some ploy to get an alliance with Suna and Wind Country, then you can forget it. Please Lord Kazakiage. We came here just to help that is all. My father just wants to help. I know that because of what the council did to my brother had left a very bad taste in your mouth, but trust us. We only want to help protect you from the Akatsuki. Said Menma. Gara looks to Menma and thinks on what he said. Gara then comes to a decision. Very well. I accept your help. The Kanoha group smiles at that. However, you must not interfere with any of Suna's allies, so long as you and them are in wind country. Is that understood? The group nods their heads at that. Some a little reluctant at the thou. Good. Then you may come in. Said Gara. The group follows Gara and his ninjas to the center of the village. Along the way the Kanoha group is glared at by both citizens and ninjas alike. Is this what Naruto Niasen went through back home? Asked a sad Naruko. Unfortunately. Naruto did go through this and more back home Naruko-chan. 
Me and our friends and families did what we could to help him, but it still wasn't enough. Answered Kiba sadly as he puts his hand on her shoulder. It is okay Kiba. We know that you and the clans tried to help him. Said Natsumi while Sai walked next to her and held her hand. But they did said a voice that got their attention. The group looks forward and sees someone they have not seen in years, some longer than others. Nar Naruto. Is that you? Asked Naruko. Hello everyone. It is good to see most of you again. Said Naruto with a smile on his face. He is then tackled by his sisters into a bone-crushing hug with tears streaming down their faces. Naruto then returns the hug. It is good to finally meet the two of you. Menma then goes over to his older siblings and hugs them as well. It is good to meet you brother. Said a happy Menma. It is good to meet you too brother. Said a happy Naruto. He might not have liked that he was separated from his family, but he knows that if they did not leave, then all of four of them would be dead. The only person he hates is Jiraiya since it's all his fault. Naruto. It is good to see you buddy. Said Kiba with Akamaru barking happily at the blonde. As the group of Kanoha speaks with Naruto, three people are not happy to see the blonde. And one of them is about to voice her opinion. Naruto Baka. Where is my sister? She needs to answer for what she did to our mother. Yelled Sakuri. Before Naruto and his group left Kanoha, Sakura had a talk with her mother. Turns out Sakura's mother was one of the people who had a hand in Naruto's banishment. In a fit of rage Sakura attacked and beat her mother into paste, but left her alive, and then left the village with Naruto and the others. Naruto glared at her, but before he could do anything, Gargoul shoots a blast of water at Sakuri and knocks her off her feet and into a wall. Thank you, Gargoul. The beast nods his head at his seeker. He then turns to look at Sakuri as Kakashi helps her out of the wall. As for your question, she is safe and away from you. Sasu glares at Naruto. Naruto. You dope. Tell me where my traitor of a sister is right now. He takes out his sword, but before he could attack Naruto, Albion blocks the strike and disables Sasuke by knocking the blade out of his hand. Albion then points his sword at Sasuke's neck, stopping him from moving. I see some things have not changed. Said Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. By order of the Council of Konoha, you are to surrender and return to Konoha immediately. Ordered Kakashi. The rest of the Konoha group glare at the disgrace of a jonin for that. Enough. Naruto is one of Suna's allies, and with our agreement that you all acknowledged, you will leave him and his companions alone. Said Gara. But Kazuki Ajsama, Naruto must return home. He needs to answer for his crimes back in Konoha. Said Kakashi. Just then he jumped back due to Quetzalcoatl firing a blast of energy at him. The mighty dragon growling at him and his two students. Enough. Stand down now. Kakashi get your students under control or we will put you and them down. Said Asuma. Kakashi narrowed his one eye, but relented since Minato put Asuma in charge of this mission. Kakashi got his students to stand down, for now. I am so sorry about that Kazuki Ajsama, Naruto. We are just surprised to see you here of all places. We looked for you everywhere. Said Asuma. Tuckle, I kind of figured that. But I and the girls knew that Kanoha would want me back sooner than later. Probably as a weapon or an attack dog. So, we went into hiding. But when I heard that the Akatsuki was going after my brother in burden, I knew I had to help him. Said Naruto. Naruto is Eno okay? My parents have been worried about her, and so have I asked Inazan. Eno is fine. So are Hinata, Satsuki and Sakura. They are just back at home. Assured Naruto. The Kanoha group nods their heads. Well Kurinai and Asuma want to know more, they know that Naruto will probably not tell them anything while Kakashi, Sasuke and Sakuri are nearby. And where is that? Asked Kakashi. Somewhere you will not find them. Said Rebecca. Stay out of this. This is between Naruto and us. Said Kakashi. No this does concern us, since Naruto is our husband. Said Rias. This shocked the group at large. Naruto is married to three incredibly beautiful women with figures that make Tsunade and most Hyuga women look flat by comparison. Tamari is a little sad to know that the man she loves is married, but a small part of her feels that she can still be with him. Kenkuro is jealous that Naruto has these women at his side while he is still single. The guys from Kanoha think the same thing. Lucky bastard. Naruto's sisters are a little weary of this, but notice that he is happy with them. While it is amusing to see the shocked looks on everyone's faces at the fact that I am married. We need to plan for when the Akatsuki comes back. Said Naruto. Troublesome, Naruto is right. So, pick up your jaws and let's get to work. Said Shikamaru. The group nods their heads at that. They begin to walk into the village to plan for when the Akatsuki come back. 30 miles away from Suna. Damn that brat. He messed up my art. Yelled Dadara. Quiet Dadara. I don't like it any more than you do, but we need reinforcements to take down the Achibi and the Kayubi Jinchuriki and their allies. Said Sasori. Yes, it looks like you need some help doesn't it? 
said a voice near them. Zetsu, said Sasori. Hello plant man. Came to see how badly we fucked up, snarled Dadara. Now, now there is no need for that. Pain sent me to watch the battle, but the appearance of the Kayubi Jinchuriki was surprising. You need to go back to Suna and capture both Jinchurikis. I will talk with Pain to send some reinforcements to you, said Zetsu. Oh yeah? How many is Lord Pain going to send? asked Adara. At least 160 or 180 ninjas and cell swords to help you. They should be here in a few days, said Zetsu. With that Zetsu leaves to go talk to Pain and gain the backup for the two Ryu Shinobi. Very well. Looks like we need to lay low now. When they get here, we will go back and complete our mission. Said Sasori. Fine. Then when we go back, I will show them the true power of my art. Yelled Dadara. Suna four days later. For the past four days the Suna ninjas and Kanoha ninjas along with Naruto and his wives have been hard at work getting the village ready for another attack. Thanks to Inazan, the group found the traitor on the Suna council who let the Akatsuki into the village in the first place. After he was found the councilman was quick to reveal all he knew. He was then executed for his betrayal of the village. The group was split into four groups. Team 8, Tamari and Rebecca would fight as a unit and defend the left flank. Team 10, Kankuro and Riaz would protect the right. Team 7 and Yamato would fight Dadara. While Naruto, his siblings and Gara would fight Sasori. The reason for this is because Dadara is the one who has the most likely chance of stopping Gara, but Sasori with his army of puppets would cause more widespread damage. Plus, Gara and his sand would make him immune to the poison from Sasori. Kagaya will create a bit. Of course, for the past few days Naruto has been hounded by Sasuke, Sakuri and Kakashi. Sasuke wanted Naruto's summons and the new power he had been displaying, along with the location of his sister, so he could have his revenge on her for betraying the clan. Sakuri had tried to convince Naruto to tell her where her sister and the others are, but one punch from Naruto and out of a window and into a cart full of cabbages told her that he was not going to tell her anything. Kakashi tried many times to get Naruto to tell him here he and the girls had hidden away but never got anywhere. Kakashi tried to fight Naruto to force him to speak on the matter, but Naruto countered that with his elemental version of the 1000 years of death up Kakashi's ass. It was fire if you were wondering. Naruto spent a lot of time with his siblings. Training, hanging out and telling both Sai and Kiba to treat his sisters like queens or they would regret it. He taught Menma how to use different fighting styles to complement his own fighting style. He also helped Naruko with her sword play and had Rebecca give Natsumi some pointers on spear play. But now the time for reminiscing and catching up is over. The Akatsuki are back and they have come for Gara and Naruto. Okay everyone. The Akatsuki is back and they brought an army of missing nin and cell swords. The latest count is 182 with Dadara and Sasori with them. Said Asuma. The group nods their heads at that. So, everyone remembers the plan. Asked Naruto. Yes, Team 8, Tamari and Rebecca will protect the left flank. Said Kuranai. Troublesome, Team 10, Kankuro and Riaz will protect the right. Ouch. Said Shikamaru with Riaz smacking him in the back of the head for saying troublesome. Wow, Ino was right. That is fun. Said Riaz. Most of the group chuckle at that. So troublesome. Not even here and Ino still makes my life harder than it needs to be. Ouch. Will you stop smacking me in the back of my head? Said Shikamaru. Riaz sticks her tongue out at him. So sorry but I got this feeling that Ino somehow heard you and wanted me to do that. Joked Rias. The group is now laughing at Shikamaru's predicament. If everyone is done joking around. Said an annoyed Kakashi. The group stops laughing but glares at him all the same. Now then, Team 7 and Yamato will take on Dadara. Well Kagaya will create a barrier around the village to protect it. But I still don't understand how she will do that. You don't need to know Kakashi. I trust my wife to get this done and I know she will. Said Naruto. Kagaya smiles at Naruto for that. Naruto smiles back at her. Now Gara, Naruko, Natsumi, Menma and I will deal with Sasori. With Suna's ninjas placed around the outskirts of the village to protect it. But then we need to go, now. Said Asuma. The group then goes to their places for the fight. When the groups exit the village Kagaya the prepares to create the barrier. By the powers of Asmodeus and the blessing of the diva. I proclaim this land sanctuary. Casted Kagaya. But that so long as Kagaya is within the field and has magic then no one will get in or out. How did she do that? Asked Kakashi. He and Sasuke had their Sharingan out to try and copy what she did, but found they could not copy it. I told you. You don't need to know. Besides, the power Kagaya is using is like a bloodline. So, you and Duckbutt can't copy it. Said Naruto. This gets others to laugh and Kakashi, Sasuke and Sakuri to glare at him. Okay enough chatter. It is time to fight. We all know what to do. So, let's go. With teammate. Fang over Fang. 
Viba and Akamaru was tearing through the enemy, while Shino was using his bugs to distract them. Rebecca was in her arc armor. Her armor had a red and purple coloring that covered her whole body. Her weapon a red spear called Gale Bold. Rebecca was covering Kurinai as she casted Jinjutsus to distract the enemies. With Tamari in the air taking on the stragglers. Guys. We are being overrun. We need some backup. Said Tamari. I don't think we will get it in time. Said Shino. Don't worry. Backup is coming up soon. Said a smiling Rebecca. How? The other Sunanins are fighting other enemies, and the rest of our comrades are not going to get here in time. Yelled Kiba. Simple. Rebecca takes out two amulets. They are already here. Face them. Dullahan. Burn them to ash. Furbled. From the amulets came out two warriors. One had no head, but the shield looked like a face. It carried a large chain mace. The other looked like a green giant of a man with burning fists. Dullahan, Furbulg attacked the enemies in front of you. The titans listened to their seeker and help her friends in need and attacked the enemy ninjas. Whoa. Are these guys like what Naruto summoned to help Gara? Asked Kurinai. Yes. They are called titans. And they are friends and comrades. Now let us finish this. Said Rebecca. All right. Come on Akamaru. Let's show these titans how an Inuzuka and his partner fights. Said Kiba with Akamaru barking in agreement with him. Kiba then creates a shadow clone and then combines with it and Akamaru to make a three-headed wolf. Tail chasing fang rotating fang. The giant wolf went right through multiple enemies with ease. Now that was impressive. Said Rebecca. I agree. Now we should help Kiba and your titans. Said Shino. Rebecca nods her head, then spins her spear. She then charges into the fight alongside her titans. Team 10. Team 10 was doing a lot better than the others for two reasons. One there were less enemies to fight, around only 30 as opposed to teammate fighting 50. The second reason is because of Rias and her use of the power of destruction. She was able to kill most if not all of her opponents in one hit. Damn. Remind me to not make you angry. Said Kankuro after he saw Rias kill a cell sword in one hit. He then had his puppets poison and killed two enemies himself. Biggle, oh don't worry about that. If anyone needs to remember that it's Naruto. Since we share a bed. Said a smirking Rias. The guys can only shiver at that. Damn. What is it about redheads that they can both be beautiful and dangerous at the same time? Said Asuma as he slashed at three enemies and killed them with ease. I don't know sensei. But this just proves my point about how women are just so troublesome. Said Shikamaru who then had to hit the sand since Rias shot a blast at him. Oops. I slipped. How clumsy of me. Said Rias with an evil grin on her face. Hey Shika. Maybe you should keep your opinions about women to yourself, especially when in front of one who can kill you without much difficulty. Said Choji as he and Inazan killed more of the enemies. Chikamaru then looks at Rias and sees a certain look in her eyes. It is the same look he sees in his own mother when she is about to hit his father with a bigger frying pan, the one that when hit with can be hurt in the capital of demon country. Point taken. Now let's finish this. Said Shikamaru, who then uses his shadow powers to hold down a few enemies for the others to kill. Team 7. Team 7 and Yamato are fighting Dadara. They had already taken out his clay bird and the few ninjas that were with him. He did not have many since he doesn't watch where he throws his bombs. In fact, he killed 10 of the ninjas fighting with him because of that fact. Damn you bastards. Why won't you die by my art? Yelled Dadara as he launched more bombs at Team 7 and Yamato. Because you face an Achiha. And an Achiha will never fall to someone so weak as you. Yelled Sasuke. Yeah. You tell him Sasuke-kun. Screeched Sakuri. What did you say? Yelled both Sasuke and Sakuri. Enough. We need to fight Dadara not each other. So, get your heads on straight right now if you will lose them and probably your bodies if Dadara hit you with one of his bombs. Said Yamato. Yamato is right guys. So, focus. Whatever you're arguing about can wait. Said Kakashi. Ha. Ah, it doesn't matter. Soon you will fall to my art and then I will go after the Achibi and the Kayubi Jinchiriki. And then I will have what I want. Now die. Yelled Dadara as he threw bigger bombs at the group. Naruto, his siblings and Gara. Naruto and his group were just about to fight Sasori. Sasori had almost all of his puppets with him. Naruko and Natsumi are standing next to each other to protect the other. While Gara and Menma are on the right and left side of Naruto respectively. So, the five of us against an army of killer puppets. This will be difficult. Said Menma. We didn't become shinobi because it is a safe profession. Said Naruko. Agreed. But if we work together, we will come out on top. Said Natsumi. Tuckle, don't worry too much. I got some friends to help against these odds. Said Naruto. He then took out three amulets. Protect all. Conquistador. Materialize. Jerwolf. Charge. Iron Squire. 
From the amulets came three new titans. The first looked like a giant man in red and gold armor. It carries a long rapier in its right hand. The second looked like a wolf but was made of dark blue energy. The final titan looked like a man in heavy amber and steel blue armor, with a giant shield in its left hand. Conquistador protect Gara at all cost. Iron Squire guard my sisters. Jer Wolf back up my brother. The three titans nod their heads and go to those they are meant to help. What about you Naruto? Asked Gara. Don't worry. I will summon another titan when it is time for it. But first. Naruto the glows bright. Naruto calls upon his arc armor he got from Bahamut. And. Think Berserker Lancer from Fate's Day series, but with white lines instead of red for the armor. After he stopped glowing, Naruto is now in his arc armor. Next, he calls upon the weapon he got from Bahamut. The weapon is a special sword called a gunblade. And. Think Lightning's gunblade from Final Fantasy Shi. The weapon is formed into his left hand. For one last trick. Blade call. Naruto uses his seeker powers to call for the will blade of the Castor Will family. As the champion of the family, he alone is the rightful wielder of this blade. The blade is called into Naruto's right hand. Whoa. That is so cool. Said Naruko. I agree. Where did you get armor like that Naruto Nyasen? Asked Natsumi. Tuckle, sorry Emoto. Trade secret. Teased Naruto. The girls pout at that, but got serious the next second since Asori has decided to attack at that moment. Okay everyone. Time to put a stop to Sasori of the Red Sands. But that the group goes into the fray and attack the army of puppets. Naruko and Natsumi began to tear apart the puppets with ease. Move and sync with each other almost like a deadly dance, this was possible thanks to years of training with each other. Thanks to Iron Squire, the two of them were protected from the poison of the puppets and from being attacked from behind. Menma and Jerwolf were ripping and crushing the puppets in front and around them. Menma was trained by his father in the hummingbird tojutsu style of his family. Because of this Menma became a great Tejutsu practitioner before he and his family went back to Konoha, but after meeting with Mike Guy and Rock Lee, Menma went up in leaps and bounds with Tejutsu. And with both Minato's and Guy's permission, Menma learned how to use the eight gates. Using the first gate, Menma fought as hard as he could, but even with the first gate open, he could not keep up with your will speed and ferocity as it went through the enemy puppets. Ara was crushing puppets left and right with his sand. The puppets had no chance of getting thou his mastery of sand and magnetism. But it became impossible with Conquistador nearby. Conquistador's ability Relentless Guard makes him stronger and harder to hurt when he is guarding what his seeker considers treasure. And since Naruto considers friends as treasures, then the puppets were no match against this powerful titan. Naruto was fighting Sasori and his favorite puppets in a fierce battle. Sasori had left his armor puppet Haruko in order to help fight off Naruto. Normally he would never do this, but since all of his other puppets were spread out too much, he needed to fight Naruto head-on if he wanted any hope of winning the fight. Alongside Sasori is the third Kazukiage puppet. Sasori used this puppet to help fight off Gara before, but Naruto was doing a lot better than anticipated. You truly are a sick man Sasori. Have you no respect for the dead? Yelled Naruto as he blocked a strike from the Haruko puppet with a will blade. Naruto then turned his gun blade into gun mode and fired a shot at the Kazukiage puppet to stun it for a few seconds. He then turned it back to blade mode to try and pin down Sasori. No. I don't. And why should I? With my technique they can still be useful even after death. Answered Sasori. He then charged at Naruto using his many hidden blades from his puppet body to attack him. While the poison and blades could not make it through the armor, it did cause a distraction long enough to allow Naruto to be flanked by Sasori's puppets. Naruto the jumped back away from Sasori to dodge the attacking puppets. Give it up Jinchuriki. You cannot win. I have greater skills than you do. Not really. I have been holding back. Just waiting for the right moment to finish this fight. Smirked Naruto. Naruto then took out an amulet. It doesn't matter if you summon any of your creatures. They will fall and become my new puppets. Along with you, your friends, your wives and your family. I especially like your sisters. They will be most welcome in my collection. Said Sasori with an evil smirk. You won't ever touch them. Because with this titan, this is your final day on this world. Unleash. Legendary Titan of War. Legion. The titan that landed right next to Naruto was huge. At least 25 feet tall. It looks like a patchwork of different skins and people held together with stitches and screws. This is the former Dark Titan used by the Blood Seekers, Legion. What not many know about Legion is that he was not always a Dark Titan. He once fought alongside with his fellow legendary titans against the Nullifiers, but was captured by the Betrayer long ago. Before Naruto got him, Legion was one of the Blood Seekers' greatest titan weapons. However, he was modified by the ancient betrayer to absorb fallen titans and their seekers, often against Legion's will. During the previous war with the nullifiers, Naruto came across a blood seeker base. 
Inside he fraught a high-ranking blood seeker with Legion's amulet in hand. The blood seeker summoned Legion to fight Naruto, but Naruto, thanks to Kurama's negative sensor abilities, noticed that Legion was in pain about something. After killing the blood seeker, Naruto recovered Legion's amulet. Naruto then went through a long and difficult process of healing and fixing the many problems Legion had. While Legion can still only absorb his enemies like the betrayer wanted, Naruto helps Legion understand who to absorb and who not to. Thanks to Legion, the war became a lot easier for Naruto and the Empire. Be ready Legion. Asked Naruto. The Titan responded by slamming his fist together and roaring. Interesting creature. It will make a fine puppet. Said Sasori. Not even a second later he regretted saying that because Legion roared in anger at that comment. Sasori had the third Kazakiage puppet use its iron sand techniques to try and slow Legion down, but Legion used the ability called Rolling Charge, he got from Alindrum to go right through the attacks. Naruto then re-engaged the Haruko puppet. He fought the puppet into a corner and then used a variation of the Rasengan he made during the war. It is called the Raisin Blade. The move works by forming multiple Rasengans on a sword and slashing down with them onto an enemy. Naruto made this while working out the kinks on the element variants of the Rasengan. Using the Raisin Blade, Naruto cut right through Haruko destroying it completely. Damn you. Do you know how valuable that puppet was? Yelled Sasori. That wasn't a puppet. It was a human being that you perverted for your own ends. And now you will lose another. Yelled Naruto. What do you mean by that? Asked Sasori. But Naruto did not need to answer. Legion answered for him. Legion grabbed the third Kazakiage puppet and held it close to his chest. What is your creature doing? Naruto smirked. Removing a thorn. Legion's chest began to glow. The puppet tried to escape, but Legion held on with all of his strength. Then the puppet was absorbed into Legion. Legion then roared in triumph with the symbol of the Kazakiage appearing on his chest. Naruto then runs next to Legion. Ready Legion. Legion then nods his head. Good. Then let's end this fight. Naruto and Legion go through hand signs that Sasori recognizes them as the signs for the Iron Sand techniques. Naruto then says. Magnet style. Iron Sand crush. Sasori could not believe his eyes. Both Naruto and this Legion creature just used the Iron Sand. Once thought that only the third Kazakiage could use, now the Iron Sand Sasori used against so many was now being used on him. The sand began to wrap around his puppet body and started to crush him. He tried to escape but found he could not. As he felt his life container begin to fail, Sasori felt a hand on his shoulder. He looked to see his parents next to him. He sees in their eyes love and compassion, but most of all forgiveness. Sasori then closes his eyes and finally succumbs to death. Naruto then walks over to where Sasori's body is. He looks down and sees Sasori, but what surprises him was that he had a smile on his face. Naruto looks on for a moment, then seals up the body. Naruto is then joined by his siblings and Gara along with the Titans. Well done Naruto. With Sasori gone all that is left is Dadara. Said Gara. Agreed. Come on, let's go and see if the battle is over or if the others need our help. Said Naruto. The group nods their heads and runs toward Suna. With Team 7 and Yamato. The group was still trying, and failing mind you, to kill Dadara. Mainly due to the fact that Sasuke and Sakuri were of no help. Sasuke tried to kill Dadara with a Chidori, but kept on missing with it, because after a while, Dadara found a way to dodge it with ease. And Sakuri. Well, she is just a fangirl I am sure you all can't figure that one out. Bakashi, Sai and Yamato were just about to enact a plan to kill Dadara, when all of a sudden, a man in a cloak appeared behind Dadara. Time to go Dadara. Said the man. Zetsu. What the hell are you doing here? Yelled Dadara. I am here to retrieve you. Sasori is dead. We cannot lose you as well. We need to leave, now. Said Zetsu. Dadara's eyes widened at what Zetsu said. Sasori was dead how? Sasori was a powerful shinobi and should not have fallen to the anyone. Let alone the fucking Kyubi brat. Growling at the news, he nods his head and throws out a large amount of clay bombs. The blast was big enough that the Kanoha group was sent flying back by about 30 feet. When the group opens their eyes, they see that Dadara and the cloaked individual were gone. Damn it. Where is he? How dare that fool run away from me? Raved Sasuke. Calm down Sasuke-kun. He just knew that he could never beat you and took the coward's way out and ran. The next time you face him you will kill him with ease. Said Sakuri in full fangirl mode. She is right Sasuke. Just train some more and you will soon be unstoppable. Assured Kakashi. Both Sai and Yamato shake their heads at the absolute madness in the minds of the three shinobi in front of them. Come on. We should head back and report this to Asuma. Said Yamato. They all nod their heads and head on back to Suna. However, one had dark thoughts going through his head. I need more power if I am going to kill Itachi. That Dadara guy had power to spare and then some. 
The Dobe and those women he is with, they have a lot of power. Power that belongs to the Achea clan. When we drag the Dobe and his wives back to Kanoha, I will have the council force Naruto to give up all of his power to me and have him give me his wives. Then I will find out where my traitor of a sister is and kill her first, then go after Itachi. Soon Itachi you will pay for murdering father and stopping what is rightfully the Achehas. Thought the delusional Achea. Everyone regrouped back at the north gate of Suna. The good news is that no one was too badly hurt during the battle. The bad news was that Tadara and a few enemy shinobi got away. Good work everyone. Out of the enemy forces only six got away. And no one died which in my book is a win. Said Asuma. As is mine. Said Naruto as he and his group along with the titans came over. We were outnumbered, but we stuck together and won the battle. My only complaint is that Dadara got away, but with the injuries he got, he is not going to do any field work for a while. Most of the group nods their heads, but most of their attention is pointed at the titans, mostly at Legion. Um, not to be rude but, what is that creature behind you Naruto? Asked Kurenai. His name is Legion. Answered Rias. The group looks at her as she continues. He is a very powerful titan. But very difficult to control. So far Naruto is one of a handful of people who have gained complete control over him. Yup. Said a happy Rebecca. Unlike normal summons, titans bond with their summoners on a spiritual and physical level. You need both a strong will and body to bond with a titan. And if you don't have both then a titan could go on a rampage if you're not careful. The group is surprised by that. Naruto and Rebecca had powerful summons at their command, but needed to be very careful when using one, and Naruto was able to use them with ease. But there was one question that needed to be answered. If titans are so powerful. Then how come you don't use them Ria-san or Kagaya-san? Asked Yamato. Well for me it's a biological thing. You see titans can only be bonded with certain people, and I am not one of them. For Kagaya it's because of her family bloodline. Her bloodline makes it impossible to bond with titans of any kind. Lied Ria's. The truth is that titans can only bond with humans and those of the demi-human race like elves and dwarves. And only those races. The reason is because they have the necessary capabilities to bond with the titans. Devils, angels and yaukes don't have the ability to bond with titans due to their inherent magical powers. However, since Kugaya and those bonded with the divas, a powerful race of magical beings from another realm, they also cannot bond with titans due to this. Ah I see. Thank you for explaining that to us. Said Yamato. No problem. Said Rias with a smile. Naruto then had all of his titans go back to their amulets along with Rebecca's. After that Naruto goes over to the barrier and taps it. The barrier then comes down. Naruto then runs into the village with everyone right behind him. Naruto then goes over to Kagaya as she floats down towards them. Just as she was almost to the ground she drops. Naruto then catches his wife in his arms before she hits the ground. Mitsuri and Hasana comes over to look at her to make sure she is alright. Naruto tells them that she is fine just that she used too much power on the barrier for too long. You did a great job Kagaya Haim. Thank you for protecting my friend's home. Said Naruto. The guy opens her eyes, but Naruto notices that her eyes are no longer her normal amber color, but are now a bright purple. Kagaya smirks at him and begins to speak, but the voice coming out of her is not her own, but that of her bonded diva, Asmodeus. You are very welcome Naruto Koi. Said Asmodeus. The shinobi group was surprised to hear someone else's voice coming out of Kagaya. Who are you? What have you done with Kagaya? Asked Kakashi. The guy glared at Kakashi with such ferocity that he stepped back in fear of what the woman would do to him. Don't you dare talk to me. I know you Kakashi Haddock, a lying hypocrite who would rather read porn than actually teach his students anything. You are a vile human and lower than trash, and when you die you will have to answer for what you have done in your life. Yelled Asmodeus. The group is shocked by what was just said. Especially by Kagaya of all people. In the four days they have known her she has been polite and kind to everyone who deserved it. But no she is yelling at Kakashi in a manner that did not fit her. Before anyone could ask what was wrong, Naruto began to speak. Asmodeus, that is enough. I know that you are upset by what happened in my past, but now is not the time or the place to bring it up. Now, is Kagaya okay? Asmodeus looks into Naruto's eyes and sees that he means what he says. While she would like nothing more than to attack those that hurt her contractor's love, she knows that Naruto is right. Smiling at him she speaks. She is fine Naruto Koi. She just needs rest and she will be alright. I have said it once and I will say it again, Kagaya and the others are very lucky to have you in their lives. After that Asmodeus left Kagaya, returning her to normal. Naruto then picked her up and carried her toward the hotel they are staying at. But before they could leave, Asuma spoke up. Naruto, not to be rude, but what happened to Kagaya? She didn't act like herself. Asked Asuma. I am sorry Asuma-sensei. 
But what happened with Kagaya is a clan secret, and even though I am married to her, I am forbidden to speak about it. Only Kagaya can talk about it. Answered Naruto. Asuma nods at that. I understand Naruto. I hope she gets better soon. Asuma gave him a smile with that. Naruto smiled back. And with that Naruto and his group head back to the hotel to rest up after the battle. Two days later. Clean up of the village was underway. Thanks to almost everyone's help the village would soon be back at 100%. The only ones who did not help were Sasuke, Sakuri and Kakashi, due to the fact that they believed that it was beneath them. It was at this point that Konoha was about to go back home. Thank you for your help. While I am still angry at what your council did to Naruto, I do appreciate that you help Suna in its time of need. Said Gara. Of course, Kazuki Ajsama. I just hope that one day our two villages can be allies once again. Said Asuma. The group then turned towards Naruto and his wives. Naruto are you ready to go? Asked Asuma. Go where? Asked Naruto. The Konoha group raised their eyebrows at that. Back to Konoha. Your parents are waiting for you. Plus, the village needs you back. Answered Asuma. Yeah. Come on Naruto. Don't you want to go home? Said Kiba. Naruto shakes his head. Sorry guys, but I am not going back to Konoha. Not right now that is. Said Naruto. The group is shocked by that. But why Naruto and Aisen? Mom and dad have been worried sick about you for years now. They need you home. Please at least come with us to see them. Asked Naruko. I am sorry Emoto. But my mission is important and I cannot let those fools on the council get in my way. Said Naruto. But but. Stuttered Naruko. Itsumi placed a hand on her sister's shoulder to calm her down. She then looks to her brother. Ani-san, can we at least know what the mission is? Sorry Emoto. But you know how missions are and the mission I am on is SS ranked and cannot be talked about out of those who need to know. And right now no one from Kanoha can know about it. Said Naruto. Naruto you cannot just ignore us. You and your wives are coming back to Kanoha right now or said Kakashi, but was interrupted by Asuma. Kakashi stand down. Yelled Asuma. Kakashi looked at him with confusion in his one eye, but complied with the order. Asuma then looked to Naruto. Naruto is there any way that you would come back to Kanoha? At this moment. No. But my journey will probably take me to Kanoha at some point. When that happens, I will visit. Said Naruto. Asuma then sighs at that. He looks into Naruto's eyes and sees that Naruto means what he says. Very well then. I may not like it, but I understand. Plus, we can't force you to come back with us so long as you are within the land of wind due to our agreement with the Kazakiage. Good luck out there Naruto. I hope we see each other again soon. But we can't just leave him here. He needs to be brought back to the village for what he has done yelled Kakashi. Enough. You don't get a say in this Kakashi. Like it or not Naruto cannot be touched right now. As much as I'd like for him to come home to Konoha we can't do that without starting a war with Suna. And if we get into a war right now then everyone else that sides with Suna will attack us and we will not survive if that happens. So, stand down or I will put you down permanently. Yelled Asuma. Kakashi growled at that but finally stood down. Sasuke and Sakuri looked like they were going to protest this, but one look from the rest of the group stopped them cold. Menma then walked over to his brother. I really hoped that we could go back together. But I get it, the mission comes first right. Almost. This is more like I can't abandon my friends who need my help. Said Naruto. Menma smirks at Naruto. He then pulls his brother into a hug. At this point both sisters come into the hug as well. After a few seconds of hugging each other they let go and walked back to their respective group. But that the Kanoha group then heads out of Suna and back to Kanoha. When they were out of sight Naruto turned to his friend. Now that all of that is over. It is time we talked about why I am here. Said Naruto. Yes, I agree. You told me a few days ago that you were already going to come to Suna, but the Akatsuki pushed that up sooner than you expected. So, why are you here Naruto? Naruto then became very serious. I came here to talk with Shukaku. This surprised a group of San Shinobi none more than the Tanuki inside of Gara. Why have you come for the Ichibi? Asked Gara. I need his help to find the primordial titan that he hid away. Said Naruto. When Naruto says that the eyes of Shukaku widen within Gara, So, they are coming. It is time. Thought Shukaku. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.